What's up guys, Kudokun here. Today we're gonna get started with our second Shauna video, getting it in right under the wire here on the very last day of the week. I was supposed to stream today, but I found out about some very interesting things happening within the Vita modding community, and if you're in the Vita modding community, I have an idea that you know what I'm talking about. So that's what I did instead, but today we are going to look at the Shauna Final Extra Booster. Extra boosters are really small, so I can't do my usual look at 15 or 16 cards out of the set thing, but I did find about 11 cards that I really liked, and we are going to look at those. We'll start today's list off with our one and only yellow card we'll be looking at, Shauna, on the day which Yuji disappeared. Honestly, yellow got the short end of the stick. I guess they thought yellow was strong enough, or they just didn't want people playing yellow because they didn't get anything interesting. This is a really good card though. Level 2, 2 cost with Super Encore, and every time it attacks you can give one of your flame characters plus 2,000 power. 2,000 power for free is insane. <laughs> this is a really, really good card. What makes it so good though is that Super Encore, because if your opponent leaves a single space on the field that this thing can step over and attack over, or an open spot that you can attack into, then that's a free 2,000 boost you get every turn, and every time your opponent destroys this, you just bring it back. That's on top of all of the crazy good assist support that Shauna has, so this card is just a beast. It's really good. Now on the other end of the spectrum, Red got all of the love. Shauna, Path to Walk with Yuji is our new level 3. Character opposite gets Neg 1 Soul, which is good. If you meet its level 5 experience requirement, it's a natural 11,000. And it's got a Climax combo. The Climax combo lets you get plus 3,000 power and deal 1 damage if you play its Climax and you pay 1 stock. That's honestly a pretty good deal for just one stock. I still wouldn't say this is the most powerful level 3 Shauna, but it's still pretty good. Especially if you're one of the people who loves the Neg 1 Soul effect, which this has. Level 2 Shauna, love is all. I'll be honest, I didn't actually watch Shauna 3, so I have no idea what any of this is about. But experience level 3, it becomes an 8500 with Super Encore, which I feel like just every single Shauna card has Super Encore, like the one thing that's consistent with Shauna is that she never ever dies. And a climax combo that salvages a character on attack. I said in my Shauna set review that one defining feature of Shauna is it doesn't have huge broken abilities, but the abilities it does have are just super easy to pull off. This is definitely a continuation of that. It's a 8500 with Super Encore that salvages a character on attack. Nothing about that is super broken, but none of it costs any stock, and it's a card that stays alive forever. We're gonna look at one final red Shauna, Trust in the Blade. Experience requirement of level 2 that gives all of your flame characters plus 500. Unfortunately, Shauna herself doesn't get the bonus, so she's just a 6000. And oddly enough, this is one of the only Shauna cards that does not have Super Encore. Just kidding guys, she does have Super Encore, ha, <laughs> I bamboozled ya. The Shauna's definitely okay, I think I prefer the other level 1 Shauna because it just is a 6500 with Super Encore and it doesn't give the power to your other characters, because like the best you could possibly do with this is if you get 3 of these in play, then it's 3 7000s, and I don't think that's that impressive. Sure, you could argue that if you're running another character that has higher power than 6,000, then this is beneficial because it helps that character out, but I really can't think of a reason why you wouldn't just run more of that character then. This isn't really that great for just a Shauna deck, but if you're running a different type of flame attribute deck, then I can imagine it being pretty okay there. Next up, we're going to look at a couple of Marjories, and I'll be completely honest here, I think somebody at Bushiroad has a small waifu crush on Large Marge. She doesn't have very many cards, but her cards tend to be really good. So this one here is 1 cost, level 1, 6500, and you can pay 1 and rest one of your flame characters to give this plus 3000 for the turn. So, 1 cost, rest a back row, and this becomes a 9500 level 1, and that, that is a big booty. She might not have Super Encore like Shauna cards do, but honestly, she would be really broken if she did. And there is a way to give her Super Encore, but we'll talk about that later. So this is just a really great assassin. It costs almost nothing. Uh, like I said before, the Shauna cards have really great back row support, so this is definitely a great card. Our other Marge is a level 0, Marjorie, top tier, power of unrestraint. You drop it, you give something plus 1500 power. This is a great card to drop at any point in the game because... 
free 1500 power is just amazing. Its second effect is a little weird. It's very situational, very strange, but you can pay one to put the top card of your opponent's deck in the waiting room and then choose a card from their waiting room and put it on top of the deck. This really only has two uses. You could use it once, take a blind shot in the dark and hope that you get rid of a climax and then put a different card on top of their deck. Or you could do it knowing that they have a change effect and getting rid of the card that they were going to change into. It's very situational. Honestly, it's not that great of an effect, but the fact that you get it anyways on top of already having the 1500 buff for free makes it okay. Last red card we're going to look at is a random Sophie card who has an effect kind of similar to the first Marjorie we looked at. You can pay one to get plus 500 times the number of your flame characters, which is a maximum of 2500, so... It's one to get a 10,500, or you can of course pay more to get more. It's arguably better than Marjorie at level 2, because you don't have to rest characters to get the effect, and you can just sort of do it over and over again, but it's kind of a toss-up. Two pumps will get you above a level 3 in most cases, so honestly, either card will work, but this is just sort of a better version of it, because it's an 8,000 during your opponent's turn, so it's a little less likely to die. If you're running a deck around this effect, or if you're just trying to splash this deck into something, the Marjorie is definitely better, but if you're already using the Marjorie, then I could see this being a viable thing to run too. Moving on to blue, our final color, we're going to start with Heikade level 3. When you play her from the hand or from change, you can heal a card, which is nice. And then her climax combo lets you pay 1 to draw a card and heal again, but you do have to put her in stock at the end of the encore step. Having to open up a spot for your opponent to attack into kind of sucks, but at the same time that does also increase the amount of soul damage that they're dealing. And if you have decent deck consistency going, then that could arguably be a good thing. I don't know, getting to heal 2 on attack is pretty nice. Because you get 1 when it's played, you get 1 when she attacks, and you just have to pay 1 stock for it, plus you get to draw a card on top. So I don't know, it's probably a really good card if you're going to run a villain deck. Now, we need to talk about God of Creation, the Snake of the Festival. That name's really long and obnoxious, so I've just been calling him Snakeface. If he's on the field and you want your opponent to know what's up, you could also call him My Anaconda. This card had the potential to be, like, a game changer, to be an actual viable strategy that could bring Shauna into the top tiers, but unfortunately his summoning condition is just ridiculous. You have to have three different characters on the field, all of different levels, and only one of them is really that good. The strategist Bell Pole is amazing. Uh, the Priestess Hikare is almost decent. And then General Sydney is kind of bad. In other words, the Anaconda don't want none unless you got Bun Sun, and they gotta be on the field. And through all of this, there's no way to change into him. There's no way to summon him from the waiting room. There's no way to search him out of the deck. Honestly, I think the strategy just suffers from the fact that Shauna is such an old set and they didn't have quite the power caps that we have today. If you do manage to get him on the field, though, he's a 10,000 two-soul attacker that gives all of your other characters plus 1,000 power. That's really good. That is a game-winning strategy. It just sucks that the pieces that go into the strategy just make it too ridiculous for this to be viable in any setting. Honestly, even if they didn't want to make his effects toned down at all, if they really wanted him to be this big, beefy dude that comes out on the field, and they wanted him to have that ridiculous summoning condition, he should at least not cost any stock. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I think that's really fair. If you've got to get these three different specific characters on the field, have them all on the field at the same time, and then you can play this from the hand, I think you should be rewarded by not having to pay that two stock, but that's just me. If you want to run a core around him, he's still technically viable because Belpoel is just so ridiculously good, and Priestess Heikade is a pretty decent level zero. But if you're running a snake face deck, you are definitely doing so to have fun. It is not a competitive strategy at all. So Strategist Bel Peol is a level 1 assist, and it is, without competition, the best card that came out of Shauna Final. It's a level 1 that gives all of the characters in front of this card Super Encore, so the few great cards that didn't already have Super Encore are now invincible. Great. And then its other effect lets you cycle cards from your hand at the cost of one stock. I mean, what else could you really say about this card? It's fantastic in every conceivable way. If you are running Snakeface, this makes Snakeface immortal, 
it makes your pieces for summoning Snake Face immortal if you have to play them a bit earlier. And you can run this really fun little Opie synergy between her and Marjorie that lets you use Marjorie's effect over and over again. So you just have the 6500 attacker on the field that can power herself up to whatever she wants to be, kill something every single turn consistently, and then when you kill her, she just brings herself back by discarding a card from the hand. That's the power of Pi, man. You can't escape it. I don't know if I've even mentioned this yet, but she's also free. She is a free level 1 card that makes the two characters in front of her pretty much immortal. So here's what you do, right? You run Strategist Bell Paol, and you run Marjorie in the same deck. You call the deck Belgery, and then whenever you drop both combo pieces, you ask your opponent if they like Belgerian waffles, and then you win the game. I mean, it's as simple as that, folks. It's as simple as that. The last card we're going to look at today is Priestess Hecate. She has experience level 5, so even though she's a level 0, she won't get her full potential until you hit level 2. But when you hit that threshold, she'll get the ability that you can give a character plus 1500 power if you use a standby effect, and it only happens once per turn. She's already so restrictive, I feel like the only once per turn effect is a bit too limiting, but again, that just comes from Shauna being such an old set. She also has a standby effect that lets you pay to rest this to draw a card. So just paying two to draw a card every turn is amazing, but the fact that she's complete dead weight in your back row until you actually get to level two is a bit annoying. So you might as well not even drop her until you hit level two in my opinion. But after you do, man, like paying two to draw a card and also give Snake Face plus 1500 power, that's arguably really good. And no, we're not going to look at Sydney, okay? You want my review? Here's my review. He's the dead weight you have to run if you want to run Snake Face. There, review over. So that's pretty much it for Shauna Final. It brought some interesting ideas to the table, but I wouldn't say it's necessary at all if you want to start building Shauna. If you like the villains of the show, or if you just like Blue in general, then trying to make Snake Face work could be beneficial. But as far as Shauna herself goes, I think the yellow Shauna we looked at was really the only card that would enhance an already built flame attribute deck. That and of course the Marjories. The Marjories are just, mwah, they're so beautiful. And then of course the masterpiece that is Strategist Bell Pale. If you can get your hands on her, she is an amazing addition to a deck. She doesn't have any stock requirement. She makes your characters get pretty much invincibility, but... If you're already running a competitive flame attribute deck, chances are most of your attackers already have high-end discard encore, so it's kind of up to you. Like, this is a weird position to be in because the only reason Bell isn't more popular or more powerful of a card is just because the really powerful effect she has just gives it to a bunch of characters that already have the effect. So she's a great card, but she still ends up being not that useful because her effect just already exists? I don't know, it's very confusing. If you are somehow running a Shauna deck that does not have Super Encore in it already, then Bell Paol is a must. Or you know, level 1 Marjorie Bell Paol shenanigans, I'm telling you, Belgian waffles, make it happen. But that's about it, don't forget, uh, whenever we do get around to streaming, we have two streams left this month, I will be showcasing some of these cards and some decks that I decided to build. So feel free to stop by and check them out. Next up will probably be either a deck profile or a trial deck review, so stay tuned. Hey you, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you left me a like. They help the channel grow and let me know that you want more of this kind of content in the future. The channel is currently being supported by these lovely folks on Patreon. You guys rock! If you have any thoughts on the video, of course leave them in the comment section below along with suggestions on what I should do next, but also answer this question to prove that you made it to the end of the video, if you feel like it. And finally, if you found this video by accident, then subscribe to stay up to date on the latest Kudo news. You can also hit the notification bell. Ringing the little bell will let you know when I upload a new video. See you next time!